Alright, thanks very much for showing my workshop. It means so much. I know you guys have a busy schedule, so in return, I try my best to get everything I can and get the best presentation I can. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I pretty how to deal with difficult people. So this is such a subject because we all perceive things differently. We may think a certain way, and someone could think of a complete difference. So before I do that, I want to ask a question: How do you describe a difficult person? Let's start with Henry. Uh, someone maybe that's not as friendly and harder to get a connection with uh, when you meet them, or not even when you meet them, or if you're in class and you work with them. Yeah. Someone that, like, I guess, yeah, it's just harder to trust naturally. Mm -hmm. What about you, Caleb? Yeah, same along the line with Henry. Um, somebody who's kind of hard to work with or work around with, um, kind of having to, um, you know, do different things or try harder to yeah. get a certain answer out of someone. What about you, Rihanna? Uh, I would say someone who's stubborn and someone who won't meet you in the middle. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, those are all great answers. So before my study, I seen someone as someone who's just a narcissist. Like they only think for themselves. I think kind of like how Kayla and Henry described one, but someone who only thinks their idea is great. Everyone else is, has no manner to them, and they can be very rude, like very insensitive. And that is every everyone you describe describes a difficult person, but. There are definitely different types, and we do have to respond differently to every single one of them. Because when we say the wrong thing to an angry person or someone being difficult, we could say one word or a certain thing, and that could completely escalate it to physical confrontation, to you see the news, to violence. So, now there are different types of difficult people, like I said, but we have, I, and there's probably way more than this, but I conducted just five of them, just because I feel like we come across these people mostly every day from work to school. And how many people here have jobs? Like, do we do anyone here work and have to go to school at the same time? Yeah. 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 All right, what do you do, Henry? I'm a school crossing guard. School crossing guard? Uh, sales associate and then uh, freelance film. Oh, wow, that's good. What about you, Rianne? Uh, I work at Nothing But Cakes, so. Oh, sure. <laughs> cool. That's one thing. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure you love those jobs, but I'm sure that's, we're not going to do that forever, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. we're not going to be. Oh, no. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, I hope. I mean, you like it, that's great. But so in the job world, everything changes. Your income, the region you're at, the people you work with. So one thing that's always going to be there is conflict and difficult people to work with. So I'm working to, like you said, cross guard, to working at, what do you work at again? Nothing but cakes. Nothing but cakes. But so the same thing's going on there. So we could be working at CEO, the high position level jobs, White House, doesn't matter what's at, it's going to be there. So it's important to know how to deal with this because even if you go to Harvard and get a 4.0, A plus everything, and you snap at someone that automatically presses you, that's it doesn't matter what you know because they're not going to want someone that's just going to go off on someone like that. So this could actually demonstrate skills that you can't learn in school. You can't learn from just classes. You could, but it's kind of sometimes people never learn that. So now... I need one brave volunteer to come up here with their seat. And I want to reenact something just to see what, what you would think. So does anyone have a brave brave? I promise this is not going on <laughs> TV or it's not going on. Just going to a professor. That's okay. That's all you drink. Right, let's just say we're working at a coffee shop or somewhere where customer service. Work and I press you and I go, you got my drink wrong. You're so you're stupid, god damn it. You can't do that, I waste my time. Such a great get out of my Hurry up and do it. Uh, you want to act like I'm a barista? Yeah, yeah, like, okay, but I'm pretty much done now. <laughs> but what, what's the first thing you think of when I oppressed you? Like, what was the first thought? Was it? It's like, you're kind of like physically intimidating because. Mm -hmm. I mean, I assume as the worker, you just feel threatened a little bit mm -hmm. by, by the customer. Okay. Well, thank you. So, clap it up, Ryan. Come on, See, that's a great, and a lot of us will do the same thing. A lot of us, when we don't expect it, our brains automatically go to fight or flight. You feel like you may want to punch the person, you want to run away, fear, intimidation. So, like you said, you, you said that, right? But in reality, you just want to straight punch me in the face? Not really. Not really? 
So he's sued. <laughs> yeah. From a Starbucks employee. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a common thing. So some people even want to fight you or run, like I said. But this is something that's going to happen. And as I said, you don't want to snap. So that's why we need a calm body before going to things. If we feel tense already, well, our likelihood of snapping or panicking is very likely. So that's why having a calm body is good because even if someone's pressing you like that and you're just you're calm with yourself, you know, you're cool, calm, collective, eventually no, nothing can re- no, no one can really say anything to really bother you. And people express self-love all the time and how it's important. And it's true because when someone loves themselves, even if someone's bickering, going off at you, you're like, Okay, that's whatever. And staying calm is important when someone is doing this because when you yell back at them, you're reinforcing it. And let's say you're escalating it more. But now that we did that, that being said, I want to do a little breathing activity just for one minute right now. And thank you for your cup. And I'm just going to do one minute of just some deep breathing just so before I dive deep into everything, I want to just make sure everyone's calm down, man. No? So you can have your eyes closed, we'll just breathe in and out for one minute. Alright. Just breathe in. Out. In. Out. Professor of mine said breathe in for four seconds, so let's try to breathe in and count to four. Time should go off soon, so don't get too jump. Don't try to get jump scared. <laughs> Even feel our fingers together. Just kind of just what we feel in. Get our natural environment. Know what's going on? All right. Good job, guys. So, as I know earlier, there's five difficult people. The first one is the know-it-all. So this is the person I think of when I automatically do something difficult and they know everything, like as I said. So the first thing we want to do with this person, this might sound funny, is show sympathy though. Kind of show empathy just because this could be stemming from issues they have with themselves, stemming from issues they have maybe at home, or maybe they, they have insecurities. They don't want to look maybe dumb in front of people, so they want to make others look not smart in front of them so they can satisfy their own little issues. So that's very important. Another thing we could do is pick our battles with them. So we pick battles every day. We could easily just stay in bed saying not do anything, but we chose to get up and further our lives with go to school. And when they do offer suggestions, just going on and on, instead of saying like stop talking to me or maybe just expressing anger or frustrations, just say something like simple as thank you for the suggestion. When you say that, this is perfect because by doing that, you're acknowledging what they're saying, but at the same time, you're letting them know, I'm standing my ground. It's kind of a way of saying things but not things. Because in a sense, what you really want for anybody who's really kind of maybe difficult or looking for problems is they want to feel some type of empowerment. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be something as simple as maybe hogging up something, but power could just take you anywhere. So making sure you acknowledge what they say and not doing that because if you just ignore them, that's just going to go uphill. And after that, you can ask some questions. Why do you feel like that? What makes you feel this way? This could be in a way of them trying to be, trying to get them hurt. No one, maybe someone just don't listen to them. People don't listen to what they got to say. So it could be them just wanting themselves to be talking or that could just be their personalities. So when you do that, it could even get their expressions out and they could be done with it. But the key word is that none of that works to say thank you for the suggestion. That's probably the gen- general rule of thumb. The next one is the passive aggressive. They never offer ideas. They stay quiet. If you feel like you're a burden, they're really not talking. Sometimes people kind of have shy, probably like very socially awkward. So some people these say these people are rude. They think they're better than everybody. But 
when we're offering things, let's it's it's important to cool down a little bit. Sometimes people have to express things like you have to have this energy, charisma. Yeah, that works with some people, but some people could actually be a turn off. So let's just say we have an assignment due, a group assignment due in next what next Wednesday. And I approach you like, you need to get this done and do it that and that. Now it's gonna feel like, okay, this is the biggest assignment ever, and I have to get this done right away, or else this is everything's all bad. But if I go and go, okay, we just we just need this done and that done by the end of the week and by Wednesday, I'll think this is done by then. It'll help them want to do it more. It'll make them want to work for you a little. Not work for you, not that it work for you, but it's a good teammate strategy. As I said, everyone's different. Not everyone. Some people thrive off of it, but some people don't. Another thing we do now, now that that's done, we could start brainstorming ideas. So now that we're throwing ideas in the air, while just kind of expressing what we feel, now it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. Now we just put it together. Now we could cooperate with our ideas and their ideas, and somehow, some way, make sure every outcome, everyone feels great. You can't have this mentality with the. You can only have it with the win-win. The win-win mentality is the key because not only is you gonna feel good, but they're gonna feel great. And when you do that, and you don't want to do that, it's just gonna continue going on and on. So, and of course, if everyone doesn't agree with you, you're gonna to have to sacrifice something. So, in return, you may take some, and in return, get that. So, just know that everything's gonna go the way you want to. And that's just kind of a general world life. I think we all want everything to go some way, but it never does. So then I can go on to my next point here is the dictators. The bully, the mans, they try to intimidate you. And I'm hoping this person is like a boss or someone who is a power. I'm hoping no one in your personal life is bullying you or doing that to you on a regular basis. I mean, you don't speak up. I mean, it's none of my business. <laughs> I hope not. But <laughs> with this person, as I said, with the know-it-all, it could be a problem with themselves. It could be own insecurities, or if the boss, someone maybe when they were coming up in the business, someone was mean to them. Sometimes even from childhood, it could really stem from that, and it goes on to when they're adulthood. So now that we know that, the only thing to do is ask them questions. How would you want this? What's the outcome? What What would you like? What What's the goal? Sometimes managers, and I'm, I'm sure we have different jobs. Sometimes we may have managers. They don't express what they really want. It feels like they stay quiet. They don't really cooperate with you. But by asking them, they can't refuse to ask the question because they will want you to know that. So always ask questions to them, like, what's the end goal, and all that good things and. Goes to my next point. This is something that's very important, not just in work but in life, is adapting skills. So, for example, Henry, you work at a cross guard for San Jose District. The it's for the police department. Police department. for the school. District. Oh, that's cool. That's great. So you could be working like that right there, but let's just say you move to Nevada or you move somewhere else. It could be the same job. It could have different rules, different regulations, different demands. So learning to adapt is something important because we get comfortable sometimes with what our situation is, but I just say adapt skills point because when you get to work, as I said with the Harvard 4.0 GPA, you could have good skills, but if you can't adapt to when things go a little different, that's another red flag that some people may look at and down upon that. Not to mention, everything's always changing in the world. Even 20 years ago, computers computers you need all these plugs and big old things now it's all you can carry it on your phone or to a laptop and now a lot of the world is technology so a lot of people work they used to be and okay, now they probably work on computers more than they did before and also to just know it's temporary and it's all strictly business to them now now that we know three of them i want to do a what would you do so I kind of situation, current situation, like I did with Henry, I, I pressed him pretty much like this. I want to get a few questions. Would you say A, screw you and your order, I'm not doing anything for you. <laughs> B, I'm so sorry, I'll get it done as soon as possible. Or I will get the manager to help to fix the problem. Or D, what can I do to fix a problem and I apologize for the inconvenience.
How many of you guys think it's A? How many think it's B? What about C? And what about D? Perfect. <laughs> yeah, the answer is D. The reason the answer is D, because you could get the manager of these get wrong. Don't get like if you really don't know what to do and you're new and you just panic, okay, I get the manager request. But that could also make things worse because now they're still angry and then you get more people, it's kind of like, okay, that's you don't want that. But the reason we say D is because I just have nothing to do with this part, but never say you or your to a mad person, like you're yelling or you're that, because that's equivalent to like fighting words in a way to them. So when you say, what can I do to fix the problem? That leaves nothing but for them to tell you what they need and you can fix the problem and it's done. So I say I a lot when someone's angry and cooperate with them, that's very important. So what can I do? That leaves nothing. And it's amazing that it's kind of interesting because it has to regulate to you because now they're making themselves look kind of silly. They could see that they're making themselves kind of like similar to a child throwing a tantrum in a story with the parent because now they see like, oh my Lord, like, <laughs> you know, and like I said, arguing to them is reinforcing. They, sometimes they just want to argue with you. Sometimes they just build up anger so someone to argue with them. So now with this, the fourth one is the grippers. And they never, they always complain. They never solve problems. It's always somebody else's fault. I've, I know we've worked with people like that in our lives. This person here, you kind of have to empower them. In a way, this could kind of be coming from issues from home or just self insecurities. But empower them, kind of be like a coach to them, be like, you could do this, I believe in you. And if that doesn't work, you could ask them questions. What makes you feel like this? Why do you feel like this? The reason we do this is because it's easy to say, oh, they complain, they're not motivated. It's easy just to sum it, and us being college students, we get up early, we do our schoolwork, so we're all pretty motivated here. Some people need motivation. Some people just don't have that automatic mentality in them that, Oh, let's get the work done. It's, it's standing. And we should answer the questions too because ask questions. Because as I said, this could stem from way more to that to that. It stems so much to different people. So, And this person is very difficult to come across. And sometimes there's nothing we can really do. That just be them. So just keep that in mind. And the last person is the yes people. They say yes to everything, but they rarely deliver. This person is not really a method to do it. You just gotta be kind of blunt with them to say like, oh, you say yes to everything. They may not realize they're doing that. They even did in my speech that they said this could be issues from fear of abandonment or disapproval. But this is kind of a subject that's kind of off because they could just bear out on the people. Like Some people just do it just because they like to work. So this is kind of how you judge it based off like who the person is. This is kind of like you kind of have to prejudge pre a little bit, but I mean, like I said, sometimes the yes people is a great person to be around because we can take advantage of them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think I'm sure you got the point now I'm going to say with this. Key points from this is no matter what's going on, issues from anything, it's always within. So it's pretty much coming from here to out here to you. It's very important to know this because when it's easy when we're frustrated already. I'm sure I'm, you know, I'm sure we're pretty balanced ourselves, but it's easy to lose your cool sometimes. You see it all over the world. And even though it sounds basic basic things, in the heat of the moment, we may not do that. So I always try your best to remember that in a way. And I'm sure there's a lot more different ways to deal with it, but that's just from my small time research. And where do we go from here? Now I'm hoping with this subject, I'm hoping I I kind of gave you some ideas. Of course, you can't just straight up be mastering this with just basic, basic this stuff. But I encourage you to look more into how to say things as opposed to just what's a difficult person. Because saying things is so important because one wrong word could escalate to this, to that. And I'm hoping down the line, you guys know in the future of your careers that, okay, this is what I'm going to say. And no, de-escalating is always the goal. Never have a goal of escalating. 
So now that we go, I want to do one one more mindful moment here. I would want to. This one's gonna be an hour thirty. I mean, one minute thirty seconds. So. All right, let's, let's breathe in for four seconds, three times. And out for four seconds. Two more. One more time. Like you can rub your fingers together. Like, what do you smell? What could you hear? We even break down the pieces of what we're going to do today. You can even breathe, still breathe in a little bit. Another thing I like to do is you can shrug your shoulders a little bit, get your back and shoulders feeling good. Shrug a little bit. Yeah. There we go. Let's think of something we can smell right now. Here it is nothing. Something. Let's take it back to our original plan and just breathe in. Uh, thank you for showing up, um, especially on low, on such a such a short notice. It means so much to me. Take I, I got five snacks here. Take as you please. I promise you, I, I'll be more than happy if they all go because I'm gonna carry them during the day. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, fill out the the post quiz and how you may you perceive things now. Can you go back to the first one, please? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Second one was the passive aggressive. Do you want us to write our names on it? Uh, sure. so much and it was said take as you please and okay. here are the people I'm just gonna get it for the video there you go I'll show you face real quick but there we go yeah. <laughs> that was a good idea. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Camera's got to use the face one more time. <laughs> 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 